A distinguished guest at the Asian Financial Forum 2014 is Dr. Victor Fung. He's the chairman of the Fung Group and also chairman of the Fung Global Institute. And thanks very much for joining us. I'd like to start by asking for your thoughts, really, on the Bali package following the WTO ministerial meeting earlier this year and whether you would see a return to multilateralism. I think what happened in the trade ministers, WTO trade ministers meeting in Bali was an extremely significant event for the world. I would say it's a turning point for multilateralism. What has happened is since the founding of the WTO 18 years ago, there has not been a significant breakthrough in a multilateral negotiation. Bali actually provided that significant breakthrough and it's very, very important. What has happened is the whole world really subscribes to the ideals of multilateralism, but basically was concerned that multilateralism wasn't producing any concrete results. And so for a long period of time, people said multilateralism is best, but we must now do second best because it's not working. Therefore, there was a proliferation of bilateral deals and even mega regional deals. But now I think with the success and the victory in Bali, I think the world has now put multilateralism and the whole multilateral approach to trade negotiations back in center stage. So what do you think happens to the spaghetti bowl of bilateral arrangements and organizations? Do they simply disappear? Not at all. I think the bilaterals actually serve their own purpose, provided that they are consistent with the requirements of the WTO consistent. And many of them are, I think. Some of the mega regionals, like the TPP, could serve a purpose. But let's not forget that what we have in the bedrock and the fundamental platform that is global, that must be strong, is the multilateral platform. All these bilateral deals and regional deals are built on top of that platform. They all assume that that platform is there. So we must now strengthen that platform, make sure that's very strong before we can move on to incrementally improve it with some of these other bilateral and regional deals. So looking more country specific, Dr. Fung, where do you think the third plenum arrangements are going to lead China the sort of reforms that you see coming in the future? The third plenum is a very significant event for the Chinese economy. I would place it in the following context. The whole reform process was started in 1978 by Mr. Deng Xiaoping. Basically, the reform has been going on, as we all know, for more than 30 years. What gave it really strong impetus was China's WTO entry in the year 2001. That actually really initiated another series of further reforms. However, as we all know, the whole idea of using market as the mechanism for the ultimate allocation of resources and so on within the Chinese market has not been completed. So what I see in the third plenum is really setting the goals and putting everything in place now to complete the reforms in the Chinese economy. And that is crucial. Not only is everything put into motion and all the pieces will emerge, but they set a deadline. They're targeting for the year 2020 to complete this reform process. Now, China, with a massive economy that is now the second largest in the world and the largest exporter and so on, one day will be largest trader. If that economy is doing our fundamental reforms and completing the reforms in this time period, it will be very significant for the world. And within that overview, where do you see Hong Kong's role specifically? Well, Hong Kong, I think, continues to play a huge role. Uh, one thing I like to just remind everybody is Hong Kong has always stood for the rule of law in international trade. And with what has happened in Bali, putting multilateralism into the centrality for global trade development, global economic development, Hong Kong's role, I think, goes back into center stage. We must continue to champion multilateralism and be the spokesman for multilateralism and really the rule of law in international trade. I think that is a very important role. Now, if you want to talk about a more specific role, what I really see is the following. If you look at the whole map of Asia, Hong Kong is at absolutely the right location, especially if you link it into the Pearl River Delta region of which Hong Kong is a major piece. Now, you look at that whole region, it is like at the neck of an hourglass. 
where the top of the hourglass is the northern part of Asia, including the Chinese mainland, Japan, Korea, and the bottom part of the hourglass is ASEAN, India, etc. We are right at the neck. And really, we would be the one to intermediate all the flows from the northern part of the Asia to the southern part of Asia. Flows like trade flow, people flow, investment flow, information flow, knowledge flow, etc. We are the mega hub. And that, to me, is the real vision for Hong Kong in the long run. Now, you're attending the Asian Financial Forum 2014. What specifically are you expecting to hear? I think the forum has become a major platform a major marketplace for people to really talk about all the current affairs. And also, I'm looking forward to actually seeing how people look at the future. Because I think the world is now developing very rapidly. We need to look forward to the next period, and I'm looking for inspiration from the AFF. Dr. Fung, thanks very much for that insight.